Good morning and welcome to worship on this, the 18th Sunday of Trinity. Let us pray. God, our judge and saviour, teach us to be open to your truth and to trust in your love, that we may live each day with confidence in the salvation which is given through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we join together in the words of our confession. Heavenly God, you gifted this world and made us stewards of it. Give us family from many lands to ask us to care for them. Put your word upon our heart and ask that we share it. But we have thought only of ourselves and the blessings of our lives, forgetting that your grace and love are for the benefit of all. Forgive our selfishness, enlarge our vision, and enable us to be the people we could be, faithful servants of our heavenly King. Amen. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Our reading today is taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, and is from the Message Version of the Bible. Here's another story. Listen closely. There once was a man, a wealthy farmer, who planted a vineyard. He fenced it, dug a wine press, put a watchtower, then turned it over to the farmhands and went off on a trip. When it was time to harvest the grapes, he sent his servants back to collect his profits. The farmhands grabbed the first servant and beat him up. The next one they murdered. They threw stones at the third, but he got away. The owner tried again, sending more servants. They got the same treatment. The owner was at the end of his tether. He decided to send his son. Surely, he thought, they would respect my son. But when the farmhands saw the son arrive, they rubbed their hands with greed. This is the heir. Let's kill him and have it all for ourselves. They grabbed him, threw him out and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard arrived, they arrives home from his trip. What do you think he will do to the farmhands? He'll kill them, a rotten bunch and good riddance, they answered. Then he'll assign the vineyard to farmhands. He will hand over the profits when it's time. Jesus said, right, and you can read it for yourselves in your Bibles. The stone the masons threw aside is now the cornerstone. This is God's work. We rub our eyes. We can hardly believe it. This is the way it is with you. God's kingdom will be taken back from you and handed over to people who live out a kingdom life. Whoever stumbles on this stone gets shattered. Whoever the stone falls on becomes smashed. When the religious heard, leaders heard this story, they knew it was aimed at them. They wanted to arrest Jesus and put him in jail. But, intimidated by public opinion... They held back. Most people held Jesus to be a prophet of God. When we look at the world around us, what do we see? Destruction and despair or life and love? Do we consistently see the negativity of what the world has become or the positivity of what it can be? This story from Matthew, this parable Jesus tells to those who were listening, including those who needed to hear it, it speaks about our world and how we have been left to tend and care for it and what a poor job we've managed. Countries at war, starvation, dehydration, homelessness, climate change, pollution. We could name so many ways in which we have failed over the centuries as a humanity. I think sometimes the lack of faith in our world is compounded by the reality that we know we need to change. But actually, we don't want to. Because change means hard work sometimes. It has become too hard to leave behind the goods we have got and move to a more equilibrium world. You can see why people leave it in live in communities with equal sharing of responsibilities and also a common pot for finances. The ideal of living as humanity together in an equal world is part of a living and breathing Christian faith. 
In our church spaces, our response is, is to train and attain to this way of living. The vicar is not the boss, but a guide, a leader, an able leader to present, represent the church body as a whole. In reality, the priest is the servant of the people. And I'm sure in some places in our world, it feels like the servants that are beaten and sent back out of the vineyard as they come to the people who have for a long time had control over the world. I must admit the picture looks a little bleak and that is spoken from me as an optimist, a perspective that I tend to try and have in most cases. Here it comes, our way of faith to bring equality to a world that has severely lost its way, to strive to be unifying as a group in a non-unifying world. What this brings to us is the need of others into focus for us to see clearly. When we have travelled to our link in Uganda to see and to visit, to help and to take the donations given and to provide infrastructure to a place that does not have what we have here. Some may say we should let places in the world evolve just as others have. But are we not to correct the balance of what has gone before? Are we not to give what we have when we can to others in our world? Just one of the things we have seen through our link with Abanda is the graciousness of others who have very little but share what they have so much with each other. Then there are other parts of the world who have a lot and share a little. There is no quick and easy fix as it has taken centuries and even millennium for the world to get to where it is now and will take the same amount of time to get out of there. What we can do, what we should and moreover really must is teach our children that they can make a difference. They can be the generation that makes leaps and bounds into the problems that have caused as humanity. In faith, let us equip the people Jesus tried to do 2,000 years ago to know what is right, what needs to change, and the positivity to see what the world can be with life and with love. Let us pray. Let us pray for all people in all parts of this troubled world and in all kinds of need. Lord, shine your light upon those who live in danger of violence, persecution, oppression, displacement, loss and injustice because of race, belief, gender or who they are. We pray that the hearts of those who visit the evils of prejudice and greed upon others may be turned from darkness and awakened to the true light in the love and compassion of the Lord. God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May you have walls for the wind and a roof for the rain and drinks beside the fire. Laughter to cheer you and those you love near you and all that your heart may desire, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and always. Amen.